Welcome back to podcast brought to you by Association Information System UTP Student Chapter exclusive for Talent Corp. So, we are back for our second st- uh, segment entitled Adapting to Change Strategies for a Dynamic Career Roadmap. So now we are still with our beloved speakers over here, Ms. Shaza, Shaza still over here, and Anji Isdaham also still here with us. And our first question, I would like to start with Anji Idaham for this first question. So, uh, what steps can the student take to navigate the transition from university to the workforce, considering the dynamic nature of career, landscape, and evolving job requirements? Thank you, Stefano. The question is about how you get to prepare about yourself mm-hmm. before you stepping into the into the career world. Yes. The transition between them. Ah, yes. All right. Okay. As I mentioned just now, <coughs> this transition requires not only upon your final year; mm. it must begin during your foundation years. Yes. The first year you join the university. Mm-hmm. So, what to prepare? Okay. Learning. Uh, mm-hmm. Keep yourself with the academic requirements okay uh, with the, uh, the necessary uh, i mean uh, experience your your, your 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 campus life i would say mm-hmm. okay and then uh, <coughs> to be more specific what you need to prepare here is is, is that apart from your your pursuit to, towards your your academic excellence mm-hmm. okay you try your, your best uh, to, to, to get the good grades you need to also to find your time <coughs> okay with your with your busy time studying here mm-hmm. because i believe utp um they are, they are, they are contact, i mean the career hours a bit higher compared to other universities mm. all right Indeed. what you need to 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 do here i mean i would say very challenging is that to find your time okay to join the events yes. the activities because this is where mm. the company will look for you we check from you we assess you during the view whether you are the fixed talent or not to join them. Mm. So how? <coughs> looking at current requirement by the industries, okay? Most industry looking for the talent who are possessing the leadership skill. Because mm. why? Because the purpose of, of recruiting talents is that they want you to be their future leaders. Okay? Mm. So leadership qualities here are very important, very imperative for you to instill uh, within yourself during your experience at universities. How? Join the activities, not just the members. Take challenges. For example, like, take the challenge as a project leader. Mm. The top five positions, I would say, like, like secretary, the treasurer, okay? The deputies, because that's where the challenge is. Not just a, a, a mere member, okay? Challenge yourself. And then, um, not only into, 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 I would say, like, 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 like events. I also have students who excel, okay, to, I mean, uh, make a, a, a transformation from electrical to pilot in SIA. Mm. So what made him became the, 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 the choice for the, for the SI, SIA is not his electrical, okay? Because engineering is always a transferable skill. Mm. But what, what they first you is that his sporting and his recreational activities mm. in which, to be more specific, he was the, Tennis player for UDP, okay, from the first year until the final year, he represented UDP not only at UDP level but also competing with other universities in Malaysia. Mm. I, I can't I can remember the name of the the the, 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 the competition of, of a sport in, in Malaysia. I mean, among the universities in Malaysia, but he joined that, and that's where I would say one of the elements which differ himself on the transition from the university life to the career life. Okay, that's where differs himself from the rest during the selection process, where the sporting event, the recreational kind of event. Mm. Okay. Another example, Oligas Company, Slam mm-hmm. I experienced one time, I mean, talking about, about the, 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 the importance of transition here. Okay. This company, out of sudden, changed their mind. Okay. Uh, Abe, I think this time around, I need someone yang other into kind of rough kind of sport like you have. Okay. For example, like, like you mentioned, it's not kayaking. Mm. Okay mountain climbing, mm. uh, you know, rough kind of activity. I need that kind of that need, need people now. Why? Because during that point of time, Slumberger secure a lot of, of, of oil field jobs. So that requires certain talent which has this kind of specific, you know, uh, being, being outgoing, being, being a bit 
tough, rough kind of, of, of personality. Yes. So that is transpired from your experience or preparation during university. Mm. Uh, that, that I would say, I mean, what, what, why? Why you need to, 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 to prepare yourself during the university so that that will help you on your transition with the employees in the future. Mm. And that is very important. Why? Because every employer, every industry differs on their requirements. Mm. Because, right. because like for oil and gas like that, can, um, it involves a lot of uh, outdoors uh, punya kerja like that, can, uh, uh, environment punya kerja. Of course, they need somebody that is uh, uh, lebih lasa and, yeah, exactly. uh, lebih lasa and yeah. also uh, if if uh, the, those particular student only Involved make use of yeah. the only academics, academics yeah, can, uh, so uh, this particular student only bring the brain but not the physical mm. uh, not but uh, not uh, physically layak lah for mm. that yes. kind of it will uh, have the transition mm, yeah it mm. will have the transition as well yeah. so anything you want to add Ms. Aiza? so I work in education so mm. in our industry mm. we like social skills so social, social skills skill is a big deal uh, mm. And when I was in university, my nickname in university was Kat Lung because Hello. I was the one picking students up from the airport. <laughs> I was the one taking them out to go shopping, creating their bank accounts. Oh, the, if they had issues, uh, I had one junior who will knock on my door. She lives downstairs from my apartment. She will knock on my door at 3 o'clock in the morning and we will go out walking in the cities in the middle of the night because she was having an assist crisis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're like, okay, like, Kat Long have to listen to everything. Kan? But uh -huh. that nature of personality is make, uh, is what makes me like suitable to work in education mm -hmm. because I like to listen to people's problem and I like mm -hmm. to help them solve it. Mm -hmm. So thinking about whatever industry you're getting yourself into, understand the kind of personality, the kind of people that they want because you're going to be fitting with the culture, the yes. environment. It's very, very different. I cannot, I don't think I can ever work in engineering because it's like very technical. Thank I am not a very technical person, but I'm very outgoing. So you send me off to do an engagement, engagement, uh, outgoing woman, I'm fine. I can just do it on the spot. But if you ask me to sit down quietly, do this, uh, that will go against every little <coughs> fiber in my being because I cannot sit still. Uh, so you just find whatever works know that you don't have to pretend to be somebody that you're not mm -hmm. because trying to pretend to be a person just to fit in in the industry you're not going to last long because yes. you you'll be working for 30 40 years guys so Most you want to there. find something that fits who you are pers uh, personality wise as well not just who who you aspire to be but who, <coughs> who you really are mm, yes because um even though <coughs> sorry even though for for example, maybe we can say that, okay, it's okay, maybe I can change my character in order for the sake of doing this job. But by the end of the day, we will be exhausted, right? Pre 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 pretending to be someone else. And it's good that people call, uh, apa tu, kena panggil Kak Long, but uh, as long as not Kak Long 7E, <laughs> not Kak Long 7E, so it's Kak, Long is, Kak Long is fine. And the, the Kak Long still stuck even after I graduated, so but I... Two years, no, a couple of years ago, I had a mom messaging me on Instagram mm -hmm. saying that, oh, her daughter is there now. I've already left US now. The, her daughter is there now, the tengah struggle. Can you talk to her? And I'm like, she's like 9,000 miles away. How am I going <laughs> to talk to her? That there's Malaysians there. But so, oh no, I found you on uh, your blog. So, mm -hmm. so the Kat Long Funny nickname is still there after a while. So the legacy is there. Mm, yes. <laughs> what was your blog? Oh, I, yeah, uh, your, uh, your I, I write share, about my life. Uh, share about your life. Uh, so it was mainly student life. Student uh, life. Uh, back then, if you look for a scholarship, punya interviews, uh, tips, uh, wonder, you found it there. Too. And then I, as I graduated, I start writing about, oh, you want to apply for jobs? Like mm. here's some stuff. Uh, and then okay. I talk about my master. So it's literally anything that would relate to mm. a student life. Yes. Uh, so, so that's how people still find me. Are you still um, updating the blogs right now? <laughs> <laughs> or is uh, it terbengkalai already? <laughs> uh, I haven't updated it since I had my baby last year. Uh, uh -huh. But I also update. I have another blog uh, that is more updated. That's my uh, side hustle punya blog uh, which is on career coaching. Mm. So that one is still updated rather than my own personal blog. Because uh, I'm trying to separate what I do work wise professionally versus talking about my baby all the time uh. <laughs> i'm quite jealous about those people who can comfortably share about their life uh, openly or like that you know because there is something i always want to do but i can't because i feel like mm, i feel like i people are watching me like that and feel uh, it's better to keep the life private macam tu, kan? but maybe it is just my uh, preference lah. but maybe for Miss Shaza it's different but the good thing is to have Miss Shaza kind of person that we can 
apa uh, tu apa tu tengok uh, the how the life goes uh, especially like for yourself you uh, you was in overseas so people like me who never go overseas kita boleh apa tu experience jugaklah apa tu know what is the experience uh, over there that is cannot be uh, cannot be obtained over here so uh, maybe you can add a bit what are those experience that that is very exclusive that can only be gained overseas but not in Malaysia Miss Azza? Uh, that's actually a lot but I think one one thing I really like most about my what I study about and uh, compared to what my friends uh, had here in Malaysia is that it's a lot there's a lot more exposure out there because you are not like okay this goes into a whole completely different story about education system lah. Mm-hmm. but in Malaysia your electives are very very limited macam you, you you have a set program you have to study and then you have a certain elective pun you might have like options from five or six you only have to pick three and yeah. but out there you have literally everything at your disposal you can take literally any classes one of my favorite classes that i took was video games and learning mm. for my elective is that like you literally learn about how video games developer develop mm. the video games mm. to Uh, create a community to help players learn about the game and everything. So I actually did a research on Dota 2. Uh, wow, Dota 2. No, Dota 2 punya community on YouTube, how they talk to each other, how mm. they learn from one another, talk about how oh, LOL punya players join, lepas tu nak belajar Dota, lepas tu dia orang bergaduh ke, dia <laughs> sharing information ke, you, you, you learn that. And then we had to play a game and then talk about without reading the instruction, without reading the manual, how did the game structure mm. develops to actually learn about how to play a game before yeah. without actually telling you what to do. So there's a lot more opportunities for you to take classes outside of your major so that allows you and it's very individualized so mm-hmm. I take actuarial science my roommate take actuarial science mm-hmm. but yeah. our elective are completely different I take education classes she takes theatre she takes the arts because she is a very theatre person mm-hmm. so we only see each other during our major classes and then the rest of it you develop yourself so you don't fight to compare with your other friends like oh why mm. my friend dapat uh, 3.5 I dapat 3.2 je because you will literally never take the same classes as everybody at the same time mm. so you learn to develop that sense of individuality and passion uh, and then you start to discover like oh you mungkin don't have to be one set person engineer je you don't mm. have to be one set person actual science uh, uh, actual je so you can literally explore other options and then you can decide I've had friends changing from biology to business in the third year mm. and you still have the option to do that mm. kat Malaysia very very hard to do that mm. so they have a lot more freedom to explore mm. uh, so for students who have no idea what they want to do they can apply to university as undecided yeah, literally mm. so that's the that's the that I think that's the most so most confusing but very eye opening like you don't know what you want to do that's okay mm. apply to university be undecided take random classes in your first year and then you decide, decide. and mm. even you decide pun you nak change you change if you want to take a second major easily change my friend did a triple degree uh, triple major human resources management and Spanish wow. so macam okay and then you can do study abroad but it's a lot easier to explore uh, so mm. you have a lot more opportunities to kind of take in what you can which might be a little bit more limited here yes This is actually uh, our hope as a student as well to have this kind of system because it is more flexible, right? Also. So because it doesn't suit everybody though. Uh-huh. Some people genius, you want to focus, you study that, and you don't want distractions. Mm. Some people very like distractions. So the UK is very focused. Mm. You study, you go deep, specialize. Mm. In the US, is very broad, which is why medical school, you go to undergrad is not enough. You came yeah. Malaysia and the grad from your medical school, you get a degree and then you can you can do medical school lah. US is you have to go to uh, graduate school for medical yeah. school wow. because undergrad is very general. Yeah. So it depends if you like general. If you don't know where you want to go, usually the US is a much better option to explore. Mm-hmm. But then you might waste a little bit more time yeah, exploring, okay. which is still fine. But if you didn't say I want to work, I want to go there, I want to go straight. This is my goal. Probably not so much. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because uh, at the same, uh, pada masa yang sama pun, macam not everyone uh, already have that kind of mindset mm-hmm. from the first year, you know. Because mm. a lot of people, maybe uh, around us, like for around my base right now, mm. pun 
uh, there are some people who actually don't really know what he, <laughs> what he or she is going to do and how is he or she mm. are going to navigate the career path after graduates. Mm-hmm. So we're moving on to the next question. Mm. So I would like to point this question to Miss Haza. How can students assess and prioritize between career path that offers higher financial rewards versus those aligned with their uh, personal passions and interests? Uh, funny story, so usually people with actual science degrees, they work in corporates, they work in investment banking, uh, mm-hmm. which you can make a lot of money. And then I, my first job was working in the university as an academic advisor. Uh, so I go to university fairs, I host open days at university, so when parents and students come and we talk about the courses in moment there. So I had this one mom who, when I was talking to the doctor and then the mom was like, so uh, you just uh, you just started here, what did you study? Oh, I studied actual science. And then the mom was like, why are you working here? Why are you not in an investment bank? You can you can earn a lot of money. Mm. Tau, and then I was like, tapi I tak suka ke cerita <laughs> investment bank? <laughs> so everybody has their own things that they are looking for. So some people look for financial rewards uh, because they have loans to pay, they have family to feed. So you decide what is your own level that you are comfortable with. Some people which are, okay, I die, die want to make 4,000, 5,000 because of this X, Y, Z reason. Mm-hmm. Some people much are, okay, I don't really care the too high of a reward. I care only, okay, this is my bare minimum and anything above that, I'm okay. So you set your own limits on how much is it that you want to try to make every single month? Uh, what's your commitments? What's the also level of work that you are willing, uh, willing to put in? Because when you find a job that is high paying, it's also, it also comes with high responsibilities. You are expected to perform a lot more. You might need to work overtime a lot more. You might need to work on weekends. Uh, my friends used to, uh, when we have uh, in our first job dulu, when we first started out, we met out for dinner. They come, they come to the uh, restaurant for dinner and then they had to go back to the office. Samong kerja. And I was like, tapi I pukul lima, I dah clock out dah. Weekends, I don't work. If I work on the weekends for education fair, Monday, Tuesday, I take off. Mm. And then they don't have that flexibility to be able to do that. So, but then gaji I lagi rendah beli lah. But I know that going into it. So, I'm like, mm. okay lah, that's fine. I'm okay with that because I value my time with my family a lot more. Mm. Some people, mungkin, they are willing to struggle. Some people say, apa, hustle culture and you want to mm. really hustle hard in the first five, ten years. If you are willing to do that, that's fine. But know that you are doing it because you want to do it, not because you feel that, oh, everybody else is doing it, so I have to mm. do it. So, if you come into the workforce saying that, okay, I want to really hustle hard for the first five, ten years. I want to sacrifice a, uh, a little bit more of my personal time. I really want to hustle, get the high paying. Go for it. Do it. Because it's good. For some people, jenis memang, that's the type of person that they can do it. They, are, they can do it. But I don't think I can survive in that, which is why I didn't go down that route. Lah. But I've seen my friends doing it. They're very, very successful. And then after five, ten years, they have, the, they have earned the right to kind of like plateau a little bit, mm-hmm. relax a little bit, find a more stable job yang macam boleh relax sikit, not as much as hustle. Mm-hmm. So, focus on what is important to you. And uh, if you are a lady, uh, I'm also saying this because I took a break last year when I had my baby. I took a, <coughs> I, I went in my full-time job, I took, uh, stay home, work with, uh, stay home with my baby and then work on a few freelance projects and all that. So, at different times in your life, you will have different priorities. Mm. So, when you first started out, it might be you want a high paying job, you might find, you might want to find a lot of experiences and then at the certain level, you dah kawe, you have babies, you have kids, then you, your priorities change over the time. You might have parents you need to take care of, uh, sick parents, sick family members. So, whatever it is at your point in life, what is your priority at that point and focus on finding a job that fits your priority, not the other way around. So, you don't want to fit your work, uh, your personal life with the job. You want to fit the find the job that fits with your personal commitments. Yes, indeed. The most important uh, lesson over here is never compare our journey with somebody else. Mm. Because um, this also applies not only to uh, career, it also applies to whenever the student would like to uh, prolong their study into, uh, to the university. Maybe some uh, people, they want to follow their passion. Mm. But for some who are less fortunate, Maybe they need to prioritize the choice that give them scholarships in order for them to survive in the university and also the uh, scholarship from a company that may can um, offer some opportunity in the job life. So yeah, they they is just back and parcel of life. So maybe anything you want to add, uh, Encik Isda? Yeah, I agree, Ms. Azza. 
it's all about managing your priorities kan mm. well if i can refer to to one of the 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 the, the meeting which i was I attended before this on 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 alumni mm-hmm. they talk about the issues affecting the alumni especially those who just left universities according to survey uh, conducted by them they measure about the struggle mm. okay because globally what what fresh graduate experience differs across the globe okay when it comes to 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 this region asian countries and again we differ across the, the 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 countries they they mention about how the struggle faced by the people who just uh, graduate from universities especially in Malaysia okay according to them okay the first five years and also the first uh, 10 years for Malaysian graduates they find very difficult especially okay to earn the living mm. why because most of the job is concentrating in Klang Valley kan Hmm. Uh, so hidup di KM Cakap dia kan hmm. uh, 5,000 sebulan is a miskin bandar kan hmm. so how the struggle to survive that situation is is really you know sickening the the, the 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 graduates so that's why according to survey the first 5 years 10 years really struggling and that's why that affecting alumni why? because alumni the university expecting the, the, this, this, this alumnus member to, to contribute back to the university especially in monetary hmm. they can't why? because they are struggling to their life And mm. on top of that, ya lah. Kalau dosia ada issues on the family lagi kan? Ya. Yeah. So, 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 uh, one, 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 dah kawin ni belum kawin lagi tau mm-hmm. adik dia ada dua anak yang autistic and imagine mm-hmm. the the treatment for the autistic you know, because of living and everything kan so that made her to transform her career but now she's in Kuwait kerja oh. di sana why? because to help the family mm-hmm. sebagai apa managing priorities varies across people mm-hmm. varies across region mm-hmm. berbeza dan that's why kalau boleh berada tak apa-apa kalau boleh bah, if possible bah, I don't want to work in KL bah. obviously the team I like to go outside KL Beh. Kat mana Beh okay Beh? <laughs> <laughs> Nak gaji besar kan KL je lah dia. But mm. manage your life lah. And that's why some people buat apa? Tiga job in KL. Wush. Oh. Betul. Ada macam tu. After six lah. Grab. Grab. Because why? Malam-malam. Sampai aku satu buat grab eh. Mm-hmm. Ataupun lewat malam. Dia boleh generate another three apa 3k lagi gaji sebulan. Hmm. On top of the yang dapat 4000 sebulan. Contoh, I mean, I mean average lah. For the for the kan 4000 sebulan katakan. Kan? Hmm. Campur 3, 7000. Bagus orang. Husband buat juga grab. Hmm. Baru beli MyV, baru beli uh, Beza. Why? To on the levy in kan. Tak kira lagi tu. Tu sama the family. Hmm. Contoh lah kan. This how the struggle in I mean, I mean talking about all country sekarang lah. Yeah. Uh, so that's why this require to be strong. Yes. Uh, Seorang so masuk habis kat sini Ya, yeah, bukan masa after habis belajar Sekarang, kita start dah hmm. okay. I also want to add on Barang pun dah naik sekarang <laughs> <laughs> Barang pun dah naik sekarang yeah. So there is a lot of things need to be prepared yeah. for Not only for Challenges uh, uh, Yeah, challenges Not only for families hmm. For yeah. uh, Sebab living cost sekarang ni makin Betul. naik Apa exactly. semua kan Sewa rumah kat KL Rumah ke bilik Rumah ke bilik ni Rumah ke bilik Rumah ke bilik My family apartment Dah naik One bed Zoom naik tiga ribu lah dalam kebukit bintang bilik sahaja one apartment one apartment ah uh, one apartment uh-huh. building one okay. bed one bedroom apartment kan ha tiga ribu sebulan dah naik tiga ribu mai aku sebab sewa kat rumah luar dapat rumah belum <laughs> rumah <laughs> dapat rumah landed dekat landed. luar hmm. empat bilik empat bilik eh tapi kena gas lah ha tu satu hmm. hal lagi Itulah minyak petrol pun tak turun turun juga ha. yeah. so, so there is other challenges uh, for semua yang uh, can be expected by Uh, those people who are going to graduate so first of all so yeah be prepared lah <laughs> manage your priorities and expectations yeah. lah mm. certain stuff you can lose out certain stuff you cannot yeah. mm. betul ah uh, there is also the most important thing because a lot of people sebenarnya mm. dia orang uh, compare the life too much with other people mm. <laughs> so in terms of ah uh, dampak orang ni oh pergi, mampu pergi konsert nak pergi juga padahal tak mampu first on social media ni kan ah uh, nak post kat <laughs> social media nak flex nah, semua semuanya, so so there is something that we need to avoid lah maybe 
uh, maybe be, uh, this comparing punya culture maybe mm. is always uh, apa tu involving in our society because this start dari kecil lagi kan yeah. so so we compare you the UPSR result compare mm. PT3 result compare mm. SPM compare semua lah compare pointer compare dah besar dah kahwin anak pula di compare <laughs> <laughs> so there there is a cycle but uh, mm. as a uh, person yang hidup that uh, at this era yeah. with inflation dan sebagainya we can stop all those culture lah sebab mm. at the end of the day yang susah ni kita kan yeah exactly mm. So uh, moving on to the next question, uh, mm. the third question to Mr. Uh, Shaza. Mm. What are the common challenges uh, that f- fresh grad face when entering to workforce, and how can this student proactively address them? Maybe ini ada uh, sangkut pakut dengan uh, question yang tadi, but maybe there is something else you want to add on. So I think another thing that we haven't talked about is also expectation wise lah of like you when you start the workforce, you cannot expect to be babysit. Uh, you cannot expect people to hold your hand walk you through uh, things one mm, by one feet, you yeah. might have a buddy yang tolong you aja processes ke mm. systems ke apa but at the end of the day you have to be proactive you cannot have your manager telling you exactly what to do every single day mm. you come to university now you know exactly okay you have to study 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 and then you take an exam you know that's the thing mm. at work you don't have an exam mungkin you have projects you have to be proactive in taking out seeking out what is it that you need to do mm. uh, And another thing also, I think uh, I was just talking uh, to somebody about this yesterday is uh, we, especially in Malaysia, we are used to being, hum- we are being, we are used to being told to be humble. Macam, oh, jangan back off sangat, macam, jangan show off sangat, macam, you need to, hmm. apa, uh, cinta sikit lah kan, macam, don't show off too much. But in the workforce, you need to learn how to be visible. We talked about visibility earlier. You need to hmm. show your higher ups that you are doing work. Hmm. Because if you expect to buat kerja under the radar and expect that you will be compensated well for it, expect that oh bonus akan datang sebab I dah buat kerja. Tapi kalau orang tak nampak you buat kerja, hmm. tak akan dapat bonus tu tau. Hmm. So you need to learn how to manage expectations and people cakap pun, I don't like to play office politics. Hmm. You need to know how to play it well to your own advantage. Hmm. You need to know who the right people are. Yeah. You need to know who so. the right people you need to impress. Hmm. Who are the people who actually make all the decisions so yeah. that when you do anything when you have an accomplishment you have to make sure that they see your visibility yeah. they see your mm. presence mm. because then only then you can grow because if you sit down quietly and expect that oh I dah buat kerja I meet all my KPIs so I will get promoted mm. if they don't see you, you, you they don't see your initiative you're not going to get that promotion even though you probably deserve it mm. so learning how to be visible in the workforce is a skill that everybody needs to learn mm, yes indeed Okay. Yeah, there's also the skills that sure. is uh, also available for students in uh, here or around here in uh, for example in, in UTP. Uh, maybe for example like for a student who have the talent macam bakat and apa semua uh, to menyanyi ke uh, jadi MC ke apa semua but if people don't see the your talent apa semua how are they going to invite you to big events apa semua kan mm. so uh, And also, uh, one advantage kita sekarang ni kan, kita ada social media kan, yeah. kita ada TikTok apa semua. That's how to make us uh, valuable. Like, for example, like there are some of those people who work in oil and gas. I can see that they mm. post a lot about their works apa mm. semua mm. kan. So, we as a strangers to them pun mm. can see that, wow, can can give a wow to all the things they post. Uh, apatah lagi those people who work with mm. this kind of people kan. So, mm. anything you want to add, Encik Idham? Right, um, Abang sangat setuju dengan, dengan Miss Ajah Abang Encik Jistang mm-hmm. Being visible very important mm-hmm. Okay uh, If I were to reflect to my, my experience before this To be specific eh, mm-hmm. How to be visible lah. <coughs> um, I face challenges on on competing with the, my, my fellow office mate okay? mm-hmm. Because the job is about KPI mm-hmm. It's about, about transforming mm-hmm. What changes you have made to the, to the, to the unit Or, or, or to, 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 to your job So kat sini ni Boss Contoh ya, eh? uh, dia ada mungkin contoh tanpa dia, dia have uh, lima orang bawah dia. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how to make this lima orang ni visible? It's not the boss, it's you yourself mm. to be visible. So apa buat dulu? Okay, I'll make sure. Okay, I'll make sure whatever I did, okay, okay, must be in accordance to my KPI. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this KPI ni I cannot exceed. Okay, and how to make this 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 uh, visible? I'll make sure my boss posted. Mm. Notice, informed. So how? 
Kena lah pada mana platform yang ada handphone. Uh-huh. Uh, Assalamualaikum bos. Contoh eh. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Alhamdulillah bos. Yesterday uh, I start another project dengan ni. Dengan, 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 and I think we need to talk about what we want. Ibala. Excellent dah. Uh-huh. Visible kan? Ah. Uh-huh. Uh, nombor dua apa dah guna email. Hmm. Bos, uh, tomorrow uh, I'll be seeing ni ni for the ni ni. I think what we need to do is that blah 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 blah. What's your what's your ni? Your take, boss. Okay, okay, good. Ida proceed. Visible kan? Notice kan? Dah dah terji. And what? That's why you need to do masa kerja nanti. Hmm. Jangan duduk macam saya cakap. Saya cakap apa? Reserve back seats nya. Okay lah, kerja aku je lah. Ingat saya dulu tu kan? No, you need to engage yourself. Okay, keep yourself informed. Apa boleh nak sekarang ni? Because throughout the the quarters atau one quarter tu juga. There, there might be some some changes on the how the company or the unit going on. Hmm. Uh, you gonna gonna keep updated selalu lah. So that's where you play your game, you play your cards hmm. uh, on how to be visible kan, how to, how to be because this in the end will affect your your evaluation, your hmm. appraisal nanti. Uh, uh, bonus pay. lagi. Ha. Uh, <laughs> pasal appraisal hmm. people selalu tunggu sampai sebab appraisal most companies akan buat setahun sekali. Betul. Or at most for some companies buat twice a year lah. Oh, year. But some people akan tunggu until the time they actually want to do the performance review when they start thinking about okay apa yang aku dah buat eh, for the last hmm. one year. So when you when you start updating your boss review hmm. every week ke you yes. give them updates on projects, you use that hmm. as a way to keep track of all your achievement. Hmm. So when your performance review comes in then you can say okay okay for the last one year this is all the accomplishment so that you actually remember mm. and that's not only useful for performance review that's only mm. also useful for your CV and resume yes. sebab you might not be looking for a job then <coughs> tapi if you only update your resume bila you nak cari kerja mm. mungkin after 2-3 tahun lah. <laughs> we are humans I forgot what I ate for lunch yesterday apatah lagi mm. what I did uh, for a project 2 years ago so when mm. you keep track of it mm. it's useful for you so yeah. keeping track of all your achievement of your all your accomplishments accomplishment can hmm. help you both professionally and personally juga. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah. start that from now when you are in university. Uh, a trick that I tend to tell all my students is to have a master resume. We all have a resume CV kan yang hmm. mungkin orang cakap macam okay, keep it one pages ke two pages long ke whatever lah. Mm-hmm. Keep one master document on Google Doc ke hmm. Microsoft Word ke or even on your laptop kan. Keep a running tally of every single thing you have done in university, every single project, what project ni, you do student event ke apa, just keep track of every single thing. So that document can go up to 10 pages long, 20 pages long, doesn't matter. When you start working pun, you just add on to it. Yeah. So hmm. whenever you need to update your resume in the future for work, whenever you need to go for interview, hmm. whenever you need to go for performance review, you so can just refer back to that. You, you know every single thing you have ever done in your hmm. entire life. Hmm. Because trust me, when you at work, you don't remember what you did in university, and then mungkin something you might remember. Oh, cakap masuk ke university, I did this theatre project, and now I have to do this project uh, theatre thing. Mungkin kena mm. buat uh, uh, apa student club, uh, staff club nak buat something kat uh, company ke apa. Then you have something that you can talk about. Mm, exactly. So keeping track of everything helps you as humans because we mm. are very forgetful people. Mm, betul tu. Because uh, being visible, uh, as what uh, mentioned by Encik Diham tadi, is actually as easy as just uh, uh, emailing to boss, mm. messaging right now. Mm. But the key, the main key is consistency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Consist- uh, consistently, and also what uh, Miss Shazal uh, said just now, consistently updating yourself, per semua. Mm. Because we sometimes uh, we yeah, we are also human, kan? Kita pun boleh lupa. Apa tak lagi boss kita yang handle banyak <laughs> em- employees exactly. out there, per semua. So that's mm. the reason why we need to make ourselves prominent lah mm. uh, in the eyes of our boss. Mm. So. Um, next question uh, to uh, to Idaham. Mm. Sorry, <laughs> what are the common mistakes or mm. misconceptions mm. that graduates should avoid when job hunting mm. and when entering the workforce? Misconception. Uh-uh. Alright. Oh, <laughs> <banyak. laughs> yeah. Well, uh, first, kali in which what. I've always mentioned during my coaching adalah the first thing you need to mention about there. Okay? Know yourself. Mm. Okay? Know yourself. Never ever anggap employer kenal kita. Mm. Okay? The first thing adalah how to make yourself tu. Okay? Kenal diri dulu. Because why? Because whenever you kenal diri you, okay, in accordance apa yang employer nak pada you, then easier the processes. Mm. Okay? Deeper macam mana? Alright, contoh eh. Whenever apply for the job, okay? Selalu kita anggap, okay, employee tahu aku, aku from VTP contoh lah kan. Mm-hmm. Okay, top university in Malaysia. Private university in Malaysia, top university kan. Blah, 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 blah kan. But then again, mm-hmm. you never know, okay. Dia orang pun ada preferences masing-masing. Mm. Okay, so the challenge here adalah, okay. 
be yourself sebaik mungkin by telling them what differs you from the rest tu yang penting sekali hmm. okay never ever kata apa rasa bangga diri aku from the city you know nah, tak, tak sama because macam dulu abang manage one one uh, company punya punya uh, recruitment kata apa mm-hmm. cik dam eh tahu cik dam from UTP but somehow this time around i nak semua UTM cik dam oh kenapa rupanya that guy from UTM hmm. <laughs> because why because this time around dia nak budak-budak ada a blend of background dia uh-huh. ada budak UTM budak UTP ada budak overseas pun ada in that kami pada bank company dia so that ada a blend of top apa nak main dalam tu hmm. ha, dia tak ada semua budak UTM budak UTP saja orang kan macam tu ha hmm. so so that kind of thing kita kena address early as early as on your profiling hmm. so that's why whenever apply for the job okay you need to be clear apa yang kau ada so far so that easier for the employer to take me bukannya apa yang aku nak from the employer hmm. so that's why saya kerja ni sebab homework sebab homework okey aku sekarang ni ada degree on mechanical aku ada degree on chemical okey so my skill are on this okey my expertise on this my experience on this okey so i'm aiming for job apa sekarang ni yang trending so ayo mudah kerja aku uh, sekarang ni kalau engineering kita kira engineering job yang paling banyak kali kali google job apa paling banyak ada kalau engineering lah paling banyak sales engineer hmm plus engineering It's about sales. <laughs> tak ada sales, tak ada job. Hmm. Uh, so, be the frontliner of the company. Okay, kat sini macam apa? You address what is the current need kat industri. Uh, that's the, 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 the misalkan yang you kena buat. Bukannya apa yang kita nak. Kita address apa yang industri nak sekarang ni. So, that is your processes. So, tell them make your profile in accordance to that requirement. Hmm. Kan? Uh, so, that is your processes. Tengok-tengok dari CVU. Okay. You are a mechanical. Contoh, mechanical. Okay. CGP, okay. Alhamdulillah. Project on this, okay, relatable, okay. Uh, extra activities, you have the skill on something, but business equipment, entrepreneurship, uh, this match dengan sales. Mm, uh, that matchable, so that is your process. Apa dia next? Okay, call him, call her for, uh, for interview. Let's explore her. Mm. So that's where you win the heart of the employers. Uh, Senang the process macam tu. Mm, betul. Okay. Anything you want to add, Miss Azah, regarding that? Uh, cakap pasal matching tu. <laughs> Terfikir tu, as tu, I went for interview at this one un- university last time. Ah, uh, yang masa dia cakap, you tanya UTP nak UTM kan? Ah, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah. initially bila I tanya, cause I I looked at the university profile, uh, they have their whole chart organisation mm-hmm. semua benda kan? Mm-hmm. The whole department, mm-hmm. I think 95% percent Melayu, only mm-hmm. two normalis. Okay. So in the interview with the head semua benda, I straight up tanya, kenapa it's all Malays, mm-hmm. dan mostly Malays semua benda kan? Lepas tu, they, they said that, oh, when they first started the department semua, they hired from local universities because mm-hmm. dah senang. Mm-hmm. Tapi, uh, apa, everybody is in the same mindset semua mm-hmm. benda kan? And then when they, they want to, uh, then they found out that it was hard to, like, instill change because everybody dah comfortable kat situ, mm-hmm. bercara <coughs> diorang kerja. So, they wanted to hire somebody outside, which is why they head hunted me. So, I didn't apply for the job. The, the head actually found me from a friend. Uh, that they met in, uh, at the event and then they were like, okay, uh, we like her background, she she is different, you want to get her in. So, kind of like, oh, relatable. So, you you have that one, everybody has that one unique thing though. So, don't think that, oh, I macam, I best-best saja, tak ada apa-apa. Everybody has something. You just have to take time to really understand who you are uh, and know how to sell what you have to people. And I think a lot of people, macam job seekers semua takut tau nak cakap pasal diri sendiri. Mm-hmm. I tak tahu kenapa. But, You jump up me in an interview. I will talk non-stop uh, because I love talking about myself and I love talking about what I do. So you have to be comfortable first to know when about yourself because then tak dila when you masuk interview. Usually the first question is tell me about yourself, kan? Right? Mm. And then you say, oh, I, 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 this is my name. I studied this degree at UTP and now I'm trying to look for a job here. They can see that from your profile. They can see that you're UTP. What else about you that is different? So I write about, I talk about my blog, I talk about uh, my book and the things that I work uh, on outside of university because those are the things that makes me different. So find something that is unique about you that you can talk about to actually differentiate you from other people so that you, when you leave the interview room, they actually remember you. Not just like, oh, ni macam this is one same mm, other kid. Everybody talks about the same thing. Everybody mm. talks about, oh, they're passionate about oil and gas, yeah. they're passionate about this, semua benda. But if you don't have any story, to tell then you lose out so story learning how to tell a story about your life and why they should hire you is a skill that everybody should learn yes indeed uh, there is actually um, 
relatable to something that we talked about earlier be visible yeah. not only to our boss but also to the interviewer so yeah. that once they finish the interview because we know that whenever uh, interview is being conducted they maybe has interviewed a lot of people before us mm. so we need to be somebody that they can remember mm. so that they can remember they can assess and uh, if God willing then we you will, you will be accepted the into the yeah. like actually dalam cakap apa uh, do your homework kan job yeah. searching is about homework mm-hmm. if you know who your interviewers are mm. look them up find mm. something common yeah. bila you masuk interview you ask them about it so mm. i i use that a lot lah just yeah. to say like, to break the ice kan you mm. feel scared of like oh these mm. are all the head of departments interviewing mm. me all the ceos interviewing mm. me chief chief semua so you feel like oh that's a disconnect but if you look them up if you find something common to talk about then you say oh it's a, we can talk like normal people instead of like very formal so it helps to make it make you feel less stressful mm. in an interview juga yeah betul betul all right so moving on to our next question to miss saza All right. Uh, how can student handle tough job markets and stay resilient in competitive industries? Same question. Uh, same answer is knowing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will, that that's my go-to punya answer for everything mm-hmm. like is that like when you know yourself and when you know what you are good at, it's a lot easier for you to survive. Some a lot of people say that oh they have to apply for 10, 50, 20 jobs every single day lah to to land an interview kan. Uh, I don't I personally I don't feel that way sebab macam I know exactly what jobs I want and how to cater myself for that job. So we talk about catering your profile. So when you actually apply for the jobs that you want and you know your personality and your experience to it, it's a lot easier for you to find a job. Uh, so I, I relate it back to fishing if you want to go fishing in the sea you don't randomly go out without researching what kind of fish what kind of umpan tu you wear what time of the day that you should go out fishing you tak main campak je your fish you are and mm-hmm. hoping that the fish will eat it you will plan to actually make sure that you can actually catch a fish lah mm-hmm. so same goes with job hopping you want to actually know the job market you want to really understand the trends mm-hmm. what skills do they need what is the uh, critical occupations that is out there what is the shortage what is the demand mm-hmm. and then think about how can yourself your de- your skills your experiences fit the demand in the, of the industry when you cater it that way it is going to be a lot easier for you to find a job rather than just applying for every single job on job street and hoping that one of it will match because if you main tembak je kan very hard to actually get something but if you take careful aim it's a lot easier for you to actually learn something hmm betul anything you want to add to it dah kerja ni sebab challenges <laughs> kan tak ada mudah okay they will be paying you for kick uh, gaji sebulan mm-hmm. atau office nah gaji sebulan kita pun tak ada eh dia tahu office you need to solve problems Okay, benda tu kau akan pasal orang kerja nanti. But then again, the question here, okay, how to manage challenge untuk kerja nanti kan? Mm-hmm. Tapi semua akan terpuhi. How to manage that penting. Then that's why, okay, okay, one of the the most challenging for the people, I mean, I mean for the for the recruiters, for the HR to assess people adalah, it's not about 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 academy or experience or whatever. It's about the apa dia? About behavior. Mm. Behavior means the employer try to assess you, okay, how good you are in managing critical situation. Hmm. That's why because kerja nanti nak benda-benda ni lah. Hmm. So that's why masa tu berduga nanti you will be facing assessment on behavioral. How dia buat? Dia bagi case studies, hmm. dia bagi situation. That's why pada tahun dulu kita buat tu berduga ada part dia panggil apa? Kita panggil behavioral assessment. Kita buat apa? Kita buat role play. Hmm. Kita bagi situation yang challenging for you to do to manage and you see how you respond to that. So kalau you manage to 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 tackle that that situation as per our expectation and you are on the team so that's why okay belajar-belajar lah susah kat UST okay mm. because that will shape you because mm. kerja nanti lagi susah mm. okay imagine ah huh? one CEO he ask my heart Cik Dham tolong Cik Dham apa dia saya nak cari lima orang Cik Dham lima orang apa dia cari mechanical Cik Dham ada pengalaman on project management sikit Cik Dham experience masa internship dulu lima orang okay aku carikan okay cari-cari dapat tiga orang aja. tak ramai fresh eh mm. bagi kat dia Okay, bos, nak ambil tiga orang. Okay. Tak sampai sebulan, MIA. Missing in action. Hilang. <laughs> Buf, hilang. Bos kau tak angkat. Text tak reply. Ke mana pergi? Encik Dam. Hilang Encik Dam. Ha? Hilang MIA. Kita <laughs> usah dulu. Kau tak angkat. Mesej tak reply. Apa itu badan cari? 
Saya tengok jumpa seorang ni buat apa? Kerja dekat Zeus Coffee. Hmm. <laughs> Sebab apa? Apa hal lagi dah? Tak tahan pleasure lah benda ham, tak tahan pleasure. Hmm. Apa? Boss ask him, the baby boomers ah, ha? orang dapur harga atas macam dia. <laughs> ask him to extend hours je kerja. Bila? Hari Sabtu je. Apa apa? Ya tu ada gaming, ada main game, ada pertandingan game. Every Saturday tak ada kacau dia. So they quit abruptly. Dia tiga orang. <laughs> uh, so that is the challenge juga kena manage. Bukan generation sekarang ni berubah. Tak sama macam dulu. Mm. Kan? Dia are into gaming lah. Dia are into gig economy lah. Uh-huh. Apa, kan? So that is the... I mean, not only people like, like us. The baby boy ni nak handle so, orang macam ni ni. Very challenging. So mm. that's why, okay, for you to manage your expectation, manage your priorities, hati-hati. Because why? Because that will hamper your processes nak kerja nanti. Mm. Kau tak semua orang boleh buat bisnes. Oh. Gig ekonomi tak boleh survive selama-lamanya. Tengok orang bagi ekonomi. Boleh survive tak? Tak boleh kan? Because most most of the employees are from overseas. They can dictate anything on you. Uh, dia kata, kami, kami nak tutup uh, operasi Malaysia. Nak pergi, nak pergi kat, nak kursi, at Thailand sahaja. Tapi yeah, tak ada. Mm. So that's why you need to be prepare yourself on the challenges to face. Mm. Sebab apa? Very dynamic. Sentiasa berubah. And that's why budak Abel Okay, banyakkan daripada oil fee services engineer. Rough neck dekat Kanada tu. Dekat huge. Uish. Balik ke Malaysia 2 tahun. Sebab apa? Live event. Abang kata apa? Kau balik Malaysia, look after your your, your dad. Mak dulu meninggal tak boleh jaga. Hmm. Kata Abel, saya dapat ni, saya dapat job tu under my my my, my kota dengan, dengan beka dulu lah. Hmm. Okay. So macam mana Abel? Saya sayang job ni Abel. Balik Malaysia. Abel kata balik lah. Balik lah Malaysia. Because why? Because ayah seorang yang ada. Hmm. Bukan ada sepuluh. Kau balik Malaysia. Rezeki ni, mana-mana ada. Hmm, Kau berdua bagus. Ya, balik Malaysia sehari yang kerja dekat Kanada tu, oil field engineer tu. Mm-hmm. Balik Malaysia, gaji besar tu. Balik Malaysia, jaga ayah dia setahun lebih. Ayah ni kat tangan dia. Setahun lebih. Mm. Okey, dia puas hati. Jaga ayah dia. Sebab dia gajikan oleh dia punya sibling dia kan. So, after that, he came to see me. Anak tu coaching. Abang, nak cari kerja lagi, Abang. Okey. Kau nak kerja apa? Saya rasa nak join operator lah, Abang. Dulu sebuah wider kan? Alfie uh-huh. sebuah wider nak operator. Kau nak apa? Saya kasih beberapa tahun lah lah. Go for it. Di paper profile dia, rezeki dia. Sebab apa? Jaga ayah dulu kan? Hmm. Uh, dapat beberapa tahun But not doing technical job. Uh, this is time formation kan? Hmm. But challenger lah. Challenger pun mana ada. Hmm. Okay, beberapa tahun ada besar. Okay, you won't be doing technical. Kena buat beberapa tahun. Setiap tahun dah dua pas. Satu management, satu technical. So, kena buat management. Okay, telan, 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 telan. Buat management tu. Walaupun challenger banyak. Okay. Satu satu masa, after nine years bekerja, abang nak quit lah, abang apa? Tak tahan pleasure lah, abang buah abang appraiser. As you grow on your career ladder, lagi besar challenges, mm-hmm. kan? Betul. Lagi besar pangkat, lagi besar dia punya orang dah, mm-hmm. kan? Macam sebab dia main kata kan? The, 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 the super power ni, ada banyak responsibility kan? So what happened to him? He quit the job abruptly. Sehari abang balik. Kenapa kau pergi kerja? Tak tahan lah, abang pleasure lah, abang. Pasal appraisal dia. Ya lah, boss kan? Ramai orang, tak visible. Habis lah. Hmm. So what happened? Cari balik Abel. Ha, this is where the transformation comes in. The challenges. Okay, aku nak sekarang balik. Abel nak ubah lah Abel. No more lagi Abel. I nak venture other industries lah Abel. Okay, go for it. You prepare profile dia, memang menarik. Mm-hmm. He go through McKinsey. Hebat tau. Mm-hmm. He go through Bain. He go through Boston Consulting. Hebat punya orang. Mm-hmm. Okay, bye. Sebab apa? Sebab management elements. Bukan technical. Uh, that's the selling point. Visible. Jual diri you kan? Hmm. So, what happened after that? Dia tolak semua tu. Jual apa? MAHB. Tahu MAHB? Tahu? MAHB. Tahu tak? Teka. Betul RM10. Bagi duit. Pandai. Dia orang bekerja. Orang cari kerja ni. Orang ingat eh? One of the hindrance, halangan you to get a job dia. Knowledge about employers. You don't know employers. Hmm. Padahal luas banyak employers. You tahu nombor tahun lah. Shell, Exxon, Selam Bajir, tu je. Eh, banyak yang berada kan? Hmm. Uh, so that's why you kena engage, join event into into career ni kan? Kena fikir apa Open up your mind. So what happened to him? Join MHB. Ada buat technical, bagaimana kan? Zero. Buat apa? Strategic management for airport management. I ask him, okay, Kamel, kau baca buat buku ni. The top books on airport management. He excel. Budak pandai. Hmm. Eh? Baca bagus. Excel. He transform the project. Tak silap Abel. 2021, call me. Abel. Saya lompat lagi, Abel. Ha, pergi mana pula? <laughs> Saya masuk segal, Abel. Cakap je lah. Saya masuk RHB, Abel. Join banking. <laughs> yang satu-satu sekali. <laughs> join, join RHB. Jadi apa? Jadi, senior manager. Hmm. Naik pangkat dia. And his earning, 5 digit. 2 depan. 
Oh. And that happened within 13, sorry, 14 years of career journey. Hmm. And that is your challenge. Okay? People transform. Why? Because the world transform. Change. Awak tak lagi post pandemic kan? Macam-macam apa? So, awak tak lagi nak kerja hybrid ni. Macam mana kan? That's why sekarang ni ada banyak handle mental health issues. My, my first experience bukan dekat, dekat UTP. Habis kerja dulu, saya tak mention dalam CVI. Uh, dulu dekat Tanjung Rambutan. Uh-huh. <laughs> di, di asylum. That was my first job. Selama tak sama setahun. I quit the job. Sebab apa? Because they cannot accept my new intervention. Hmm. Uh, masa tu, tu ada handle lah. Cases, orang yang ada mental health issues di workplaces. Masa tu, early 90s tu, dah ada dah. It's case, hmm. case macam tu. Apa tak sekarang? Post pandemic, macam-macam orang face challenges kan? Hmm. So that's the challenge you, you to face now and after this. Because pandemic tak habis lagi. Hmm. Pandemic tak habis lagi, ada lagi. Habis. And program tak habis lagi, ada lagi program. Hmm. So that's where you need to prepare yourself because Malaysia is not your boundaries. Because you need to transform, go be your boundaries, be overseas. Bukan setakat belajar saja, kerja overseas, pergi. Because Thailand Malaysia among the best in the world. Kalau tak, kalau budak habis, pergi overseas. Tak? Hmm. Uh, because now you are on the right track lah. The best you see in Malaysia, UTP. The rest-nya, experience yourself. Betul. Engage. Proof. Visible. Hmm-hmm. Then prepare yourself. To fly higher. Itu je. Hmm. Setuju. Because and also, kat UTP pun, uh, kita pun boleh, tak boleh tak, hmm. tak boleh stick just in one particular punya field je. Contoh dalam event. Hmm. They cannot only stay as a member. Yeah. Maybe sometimes we can do ceremony protocol. Lepas, lepas tu event lainnya boleh buat logistik. Kan? Ha, lepas tu maybe nak tinggi sikit, project director apa yeah, semua kan. Bagus. So these are all of the challenges that challenges. we need to apa tu adapt oh, kan. Adapt, uh, experience. Hmm, because hmm. Uh, whenever we uh, we are in that one particular punya place sahaja we tend to build our own comfort zone yeah. so comfort zone sometimes can be dangerous juga kan yeah. so any um, opinions regarding those people who just want to stay in the comfort zone uh, siapa tadi <laughs> lupa dah uh, I, I can go uh. first lah uh, so I <laughs> Like when we say inspiration can come from anywhere, this particular inspiration comes from Tumblr. Mm. <laughs> uh, the Tari. young people faham lah. Uh, Tumblr, 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 uh. is that uh, there's a few types of people in this world uh, uh, and they refer back to plants lah. So some people are like macam pokok kelapa, pokok-pokok besar yang memang you want to grow tall, you want to grow high, you want to climb the career ladder. Mm. Some people are like that. They're very focused. Mm. I want to be CEO. I want to climb up. I want to be senior management. Mm. Uh, so in terms of career was, you focus on that. Some people jenis yang uh, jenis pokok yang macam you want to stay one place. You want to dig your deep roots. Uh, your roots go down deep. So benda you want to focus build that. You see that a lot with older people that they uh, stay loyal to one company for 10, 20, 50, 30 years. Uh, they really build up the knowledge, they really build up the industry knowledge, the skills needed for that one particular area, semua benda. Some people, uh, and then this is more closely like me at this point in time, is that you macam jenis pokok menjala. You want to try something here and then you pergi sana. And then macam, oh something interesting pergi sana and then you pergi sana. So some people jenis yang memang have a lot of interest, they want to try a little bit of everything before they actually decide on the specialty. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> Uh, but uh, your opinion regarding those people who want, just want to stay there okay. uh, so, and then earlier we talked about priorities so, and some mm. people have different priorities and then at a certain point in life when you have a family when you have kids you might focus on you might say okay I don't mind staying stable semua benda because you have family you have kids going to school you want to stay stable you want to stay there it's okay to stay in the comfort job as long as you are constantly doing something that is a little bit more challenging at the same job. So, macam janganlah buat benda sama je every single day and expect them to grow. So, you might stay in the same place but you might try something new. Or, or I want to try a new project this year. Or I want to try uh, I want to try something else. So, you ask for a second man to a different department. Because trying something new doesn't necessarily mean you pindah kerja baru. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to jump to a new job. You can still jump jobs within your companies. You can move uh, uh, move to a different department. You can shadow somebody in a different department. You can try something new. So that it doesn't have necessarily mean you can terus, okay, I want to quit. I want to try terus pindah company. So you not stay comfort zone, that's okay but have a plan on how long you want to stay there before you move. So macam, okay, my daughter now tengah sekolah, so I nak tunggu sampai dia habis sekolah and then I want to try something new. So at least you set yourself a limit but also 
try to find other stuff yang we talked about apa constantly upskilling constantly mm. learning mm. so when you are in your comfort zone you want to do it until a certain point but find other things that you can also do so macam you try something new so if one day you want you nak keluar from your comfort zone you are not completely left behind in terms of skills or knowledge mm, yeah. so plan it well you not comf- i i am in the comfort zone right now uh, because my baby is still small but then at least i my comfort zone is like, okay i kerja yang relax flexible but also i'm doing other stuff so that if in the future i want to change to something else i want to do something then at least tak adalah ketinggalan sangat sebenarnya hmm. uh, so do it well lah whatever that you we talked about informed decisions in your career Jangan hmm. buat sekadar macam oh, kita nak buat apa-apa I want to stay here macam so, nanti kalau uh, AI takes over your job hmm. what are you going to do? Yeah. Robots take over the world what are you going to do? You're going to be left with nothing. Hmm. I want to add out uh, apa tu I want to uh, apa tu nak tanya lagi soalan regarding the, the last uh, sentence maybe hmm. I can ask to Encik Idaham. Hmm. So what is your opinion regarding AI that is going to take over the jobs of the people uh, in this world? It's unavoidable. Unavoidable. Uh, you have to face it. You have to be part of it. There are issues actually on, on ethical issues, can mm-hmm. about deb- being, being debating about, about this 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 new emerging technology AI, can. Mm-hmm. But somehow, okay, this part and parcel of how the world moves on. Mm. Okay, we cannot live kebelaka. Okay, we cannot sit here and breath and technology. Ni. So that's where, okay, whatever. Or tapa kalau kalau the the new, okay, I mean. For the sake of upskilling yourself, mm-hmm. especially with the, with the skill yang yang will change the world, go for it. Okay, there are issues, but somehow okay the world will adapt to it. Contoh mm-hmm. dulu kan, uh, what my 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 talent, uh, uh, the mechanical. Mm-hmm. There was the 2015, the time when uh, the oil and gas industry start to gloom. Okay, so what happened to him? Abah, I want to transform. Abah, how upskill? Bisa cakap tadi, how? Tukar courses masa tu AI tengah naik, hmm. uh, so he had to pay sing dollar ke Singapura. Kakak macam ada ni, so he went there <coughs> for for I'm not mistaken for 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 one month or apa 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 apa. He could that cost that cost, okay? He excel it, and the f- next job for him after all in gas industry berapa dia? Jadi Tesla. Hmm. See, the importance of keeping yourself abreast or together with the current technology. Walaupun masa tu memang totally new, orang kata tak, eh, betul ke? Eh, macam ni, orang boleh replace manusia buat siapa kan? Hmm. Uh, on, 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 on the issues ni. But somehow, itu kan ada challenges, sign up for it, bayar, invest kat, 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 situ, kat situ. He became the first among orang Malaysia, apa nama, has that competency on AI. Hmm. And he joined Tesla. <laughs> wow. Contoh, penting. Hmm. Keep yourself with the, with the current or latest technology. You have to be with that. You hmm. can't avoid that. Hmm. Betul tu. Mm-hmm. Just like how many uh, tu kalau kita tengok ke belakang balik tahun-tahun lepas kan. Mm. Uh, when the world have no social media, yeah, inter- exactly. uh, when internet uh, tak mm. ada apa semua, but today we have mm. macam career like content creators mm. and also uh, we also can conduct like for the lecturers who wants to go uh, vacation in the middle of uh, of the study <laughs> way apa semua, maybe mm. he can conduct uh, a lecture yeah. from afar, yeah, well, online, uh, online apa semua, guna mm. Google Meet apa semua, mm. because uh, talking about Google Meet, talking about Microsoft apa semua, mm. those people, teknologi sebenarnya dah lama yeah. ada sebenarnya, but Betul. because of pandemic, yes. barulah this teknologi mula berkembang, so that's how the world is actually adapting to yes. this kind of teknologi, so uh, if this kind of teknologi can be adapted to our daily life, I think AI also have the chance. Yes. Okay. All right. Next. For the next question, uh, to uh, uh, <laughs> mana mana lah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are the key skills and adaptable mindset that students should develop to remain competitive and agile when transitioning from one career to another? The key skill. Hmm. All right. Yeah lah. Mm-hmm. So okay. Let's say lah. Imagine lah. Imagine you are now on your third year. Mm-hmm. Dah bekerja, okay, mm-hmm. dah bekerja sebagai IT executive Contohlah dekat bank, one bank lah mm-hmm. I'm giving one example This example One IT student from UTP mm-hmm. Okay, um, he, she just joined this uh, This, uh, I sebut lah, band negara eh. mm-hmm. Dia betul-betul employer tu, band negara tu mm-hmm. Okay, join band negara he, She's one of the top student uh, from UTP IT dulu 
the spirit of the of the chancellor to walk join by negara okay but after three years eh? but she's not doing what she's passionate about ah what lain limit itu ai hmm. so what happened okay dia took up masters on ai dekat uc malaya hmm. okay buat masters bapak dia ada aim dia okay so after buat master tu macam kat dia go for it because that's your passion kan okay betul ba go for it habis master Contact balik Abel, mungkin okay, Abel, saya nak prefer my, my profile dah, okay. buat ajar dia, I coach dia, okay. profile dia menarik, she secure tiga banks, hmm. top bank lah, ha? Maybank, CIMB, <coughs> RHB, dia ambil apa? CIMB, sebab apa? Gaji lagi besar bang, hmm. lepas tu pula closer to rumah dia, manager priorities kan, uh-huh. gaji okey, benefit okey, lepas tu pula dekat rumah Abel, naik trip, bukan CIMB tahu dekat dengan Kent Central kan, dekat hmm. situ, okay, and then after that, okay, Bila dah habis tu, join this this this, uh, this company, okay? Uh, talking about about managing the apa ni? Uh, uh, the practice uh, tu. Uh, yes. Okay. Kata apa manusia tak jadi puas? <laughs> Ada pun again. Kerja dah okay dah. Boss okay. okay. Office mate guys. So pretty semua okay. Kerja okay. Tak pasal lagi benda. Apa dah? Dia nak flexibility. <laughs> gaji okey lah, gaji okey. Mesti dah datang come together with the other package kan. Yang, oh. yang mungkin challenging kan. Masa mahal tu apa? Tak flexible lah abang. Anak dah dua. Hmm. Uh, masa tu lah. Masa dah tarik sikit. Family life, career life. Uh, especially orang perempuan lah kan. Hmm. So what happen? Abang, rasa nak lompat lagi lah abang. Alah, baru tiga tahun nak lompat lagi dah. <laughs> Kerja dah okey dah. Nak lompat tak flexible lah abang. Habis kata, saya kerja lain nak buat flexible lah abang. Uh, now, the current challenges among ladies adalah managing the family hmm. the career and the family and that's why some people okay i mean especially the ladies they start to opt up dia saya kerja-kerja yang flexible uh, contoh kerja uh, yang work from home punya kan kerja and that's why whenever i look at, at the, the profile of friends on my facebook kan my ex student after certain, certain years bekerja kan mm-hmm. dah ada anak kan dah ada family kan mm-hmm. they make a career change uh, so kalau tu buat apa buat apa nama jadi apa jadi uh, seller or, or, online selling mm-hmm. jual ha siapa jual macam-macam benda and they are doing very well sebab apa because kerja tu pun kena apply dengan gaji dulu mm. so what they did adalah keep on learning keep on upskilling mm. belajar facebook punya punya marketing macam mana uh-huh. on how on how, how online macam mana tiktok sale macam mana shopping macam mana kan and they, in fact some of them make more double triple than the previous gaji Hmm. Uh, so that's how penting bagi Abel okay? uh, apart from, from managing your priorities managing the challenges and also the issues in which keep on hunting you okay? upon your your, 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 your kerja itu you kena kena, kena beli, 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 beli apa? apa bersedia lah hmm. betul so that hmm. alright perkongsian begitu-begitu uh, begitu menarik tadi hmm. ya sebab uh, nak payment key skills untuk uh, mindset the student sebenarnya banyak sebenarnya yeah. kan? mm. and also at the same times pun uh, the, the main key lah we need to have uh, percaya pada rezeki juga yeah, yeah, percaya pada rezeki juga maybe for example like ada challenges macam uh, ada ada nak yang mm. nak kena fleksibel sikit apa semua but uh, bumi ni luas kan uh, and sometimes eh, kalau kita tak mampu uh, untuk meneruskan kerja macam hmm. uh, for example inside the office pun semua hmm. uh, we have social media kita buat hmm. sales hmm. at the same time boleh generate kita punya income juga yeah. okay. so uh, that is the uh, end for the segment 2 so we move on for the Q&A session hmm. so I have a question over here what are the advice do you have for student looking of to secure internship in today's competitive industries? Hmm. Any of you? Advice kepada... Internship? Ah, untuk internship. TP masih lagi 8 bulan kan? 8 months? Ah, yes. Ada SIP, SIT, SIT lagi? Eh, ya, yeah, masih. 4 month, 4 month? Ya, yeah, 4 month, 4 month. Alright. <coughs> well, um, <coughs> looking for internship ni berkata lah. To me, ada dua benda kena tengok. You kena consider. Two things you need to consider. To, to, to consider. Pertamanya, yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nombor dua ni employers. Mm-hmm. Nombor one, yourself. Okay. Mesti adalah, manage your, your priorities. Apa you nak sebenarnya? Because mm-hmm. internship is your sebelah kaki towards your career work. Mm, betul. Okay, why? Because plan kita adalah, eh, you join the company in which that will be your employer after this. Mm. Upon your graduation nanti. 
Uh, that's the best strategy. And that requires to know yourself. Okay. Contoh, kalau let's say that you become a clinical, kan? Mm-hmm. Ya, because banyak, kan? Ada part camp-nya, mm. ada process-nya, ada environment-nya, and whatnot, kan? Banyak. So, what will be my specialization? Because that specialization will determine what type of employer. Mm. Kalau sana, kan? Kalau company yang buat environment, berbeza. Company yang buat process, berbeza. Company yang buat part camp, berbeza, kan? So, that's mm. why you need to know yourself. What are your priorities kat situ, kan? Mm-hmm. So, that's why, kena start buat profiling kat situ. Mm-hmm. Supaya, understandable kepada your next beberapa kami kami ambil on your, on your, for, for your internship placement kan mm. okay after that the okay. kena lagi you upon what what you want okay that will make easier for the process for for you to to start your work you lah bulan apa bulan kat situ kan mm-hmm. and that will be your asset for you to put on your CV nanti nak kerja nanti mm. contoh kalau dia tak nak kerja kat situ mm-hmm. you want to explore other employers uh, that experience matters so that's why prepare elok deliver elok di SIP, SIT, SIP project, buat mm-hmm. terbaik. Because that will determine your profile nanti. Mm-hmm. Alright, di, 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 you yourself. Nombor dua, the employers. You know, identify because some employers, <coughs> they have specific specific requirement. Contoh, eh. <coughs> okay. Aku nak talent ni, okay, join our project in Sabah, contoh. Mm. Kata, alamak, Sabah tak nak pergi lah, Bedah. Contoh lah, kan. Itu yang penting, kan. Saya boleh nak tu. So, you need to communicate with them dulu. Jangan masuk nanti, okay, bila join, alamak sabar, saya dah quit lah. No. That will affect your attitude. Hmm. Memilih, choose it. Employee tak suka. Betul. To plan or what? Knowing your employers. Hmm. Kan, kalau kalau you nak, nak buat environment, kamu juga kata buat projek dekat Sabah. Oh, tak nak lah. So, tolak awal-awal. Saya kami lain. Hmm. Supaya tak berlaku you, keluar awal nanti. Hmm. Okay, contoh, one example dah habis dulu kan. Very classic example. Let me share throughout my, 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 my experience. You join one company. Mm-hmm. I mean, talking about managing your your employer uh, uh, to your internship end. Mm. The first two months, this employer expose him kepada apa? Bukan kerja sebagai engineer. His expectation is jadi engineer. Kerja kat site, pergi ke field, begini kan? Mm. Masuk-masuk kerja buat apa tau? Okay. Driver, dispatch. Mm. Company bagi kunci, nada, 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 nazarnya ada kat dia. Mm-hmm. Okay. Kau bawa kereta ni, pergi hantar barang to our clients. Pergi sana, pergi Johor, pergi Pindan, pergi ke Maman Supply Base, pergi Pulau Indah, pergi Penama. Hantarlah hangat kepada kereta tu. Hmm. Cukup sebulan, dia complain. Attitude eh. He talk to what? Social media. Satu. Kesiapan dia. Nombor dua, dia tak communicate dengan apa dia? Dengan authorities. Hmm. Dengan boss dia, superior dia. Inter- internship tau. Hmm. Dengan UTP, supervisor. Hmm. So what happened? Betul dah go haywire dekat social media. Buah dapat tahu, buah dah lulus kan? Hmm. Buah dapat tahu, in subordination. Melawan. Ah, so, what happened? Okay. The company report kepada supervisor. Mm-hmm. Supervisor panggil dia. What happened? Alamak. Kantoi. Mm-hmm. Ah, so, tarnish everything. Just, that's why manage your employees very important nanti. Sebab apa? That will tarnish everything. Buku dah rosak. Mm. Ah, nak buka chapter baru, bukan mudah sayang. Mm. Because employer ni, very small world. Very Kenal. Okay. Apa tak lagi kalau join HR? Bila nak join, join online guest, duit online guest very small. Mesti pusing orang tu sambung saja. Hmm. Uh, so, what happen? Menangis kau habis. Habis tak tolong habis. Eh, kau ada institut ni? Kau tak ada institut ni lah. Saya habis juga. Tak tolong macam mana, macam mana, macam mana. This will affect his career kan? Hmm. Uh, macam ni. Kau ada polisi, mohon maaf. Tak mohon maaf lagi kan? Duduk lagi. You buat face to face, mohon maaf. Hmm. No email, no 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 text text. Face to face. Hmm. Okay? You do to yourself. Cakap. Okay, explain that look. Rectify everything. Akhirnya, rezeki dia, semua okey balik. Uh, oh. nah. The reason why, kami letak dia macam, kenapa <laughs> buat kereta sebulan tu kan, apa-apa. The reason adalah, aku nak jaga, I want, I want you to learn, who are our clients. Hmm. Okay, different client, different way of handling it. Pasal tak, tanya? Oh, betul, so, ha, see, that's the learning process. Orang muda cepat melatah. Hmm. Kan? Uh, so, that's why, kena manage your, apa dia? Attitude and behavior kadang-kadang. Betul tu. Kadang-kadang kita, kita, kita rasa aku ni from university top, university bagus. Okay, aku top student. Ah, layan aku. I'm the king. You are the king Kong. Tak boleh tu. Kita nak kerja dengan orang-orang. Nak belajar, nak learn from them kan. Betul. Kita lebih humble. Macam apa cerita saya kadang-kadang humble. Hmm. Tak boleh. Immunity tu everything sebenarnya sekarang ni. Hmm. And then what happened to him? Everything that they fight. Uh, apa nama? That, that lesson tu habis share kat throughout itu si punya-punya session. Semua orang beri ingat berhati hmm. On managing the number one The employees 
penting. Betul. Nah, itu dia. So berhati-hatilah menggunakan sas- benda yang di hujung yeah, jari kita ni. Yeah, so, so, because tani saya betul. Ya. Borderless. So hmm. eh, uh, kuasa viral ni is very very dangerous. Okay, hmm. kalau salah guna apa semua. So anything you want to add on, Miss Shaza? Uh, following up on that lah. I think it's important to know who to talk to and who to who to turn to when you have issues a lot hmm. of people hmm. bila ada problem kan terus you take to social media ke you take hmm. to parents kan when the first person you should talk to is your line manager your supervisor yeah. they are there to help to support you your hmm. HR is there you ada hmm. problem about your contract you have issues about nak cuti tak boleh cuti ke hmm. you have issues about your workload ke apa first person to talk to is your manager tapi jangan takut because hmm. they are scared to ask for help that's one thing lah I think a lot of people tak berani minta tolong mm-hmm. they, they assume that when you go into the work first you don't have to know everything tau mm. you don't have to know all the solutions trust me a lot of people macam they don't know stuff they just pretend that they know stuff or you know who knows stuff so you don't have to have all the answers you just have to know who to talk to to find out the answers mm. so learn how to ask for help if you need it But even when you ask for help pun, even when we were talking about earlier yang apa emailing, updating your boss about your being visible kan. Mm-hmm. When you email your boss semua, let them know in advance if you need help or bila you email them, if you want them to review it to say okay or if you just want to update them on stuff and they they just need to acknowledge that they've sent it or if you need them to actually give you more support. Hmm. So be upfront. If you need more support, ask for it. Jangan hmm. tunggu sampai benda tu fail hmm. and then your boss tanya kenapa benda ni fail. And then you cakap oh sebab you tak tolong I. Tak kalau you tak cakap, they don't know. They cannot read your mind. So be upfront. If you say if you feel like you struggling, you need a buddy, ask for it. Can I have a buddy? So uh, funny story at my first job um, place masa I masuk. I masuk and initially there was supposed to be somebody to actually bring me, I was working in university advising kan, so there was supposed to be somebody to bring me down to admissions office untuk ajar macam mana nak buat admissions. How to look at student punya transcript and say that oh yes, the students can join this university or not. Uh, my buddy didn't do that for the first three months I kat situ, pernah sekali je and then tak ada. So I actually went up to my boss and said, I tak belajar lagi benda ni tu, it's been three months, can I learn with somebody else or not? I have this other colleague who's offered to help me, can I learn with her? So my boss cakap, yeah, go ahead, just just belajar. So macam, because I realised that I was supposed to be given that and then I didn't get that. Hmm. So macam daripada I tunggu benda tu tak sampai-sampai kan. Might as well I just ask for it and then macam ada. There will always be people willing to help you hmm. if you know who to ask and how to ask. Yeah. Hmm. So just learn to ask and talk to your managers because hmm. your managers want the best for you. They care for your welfare, they want to support you, they want to support your career growth, so a good manager will want to support you, so just talk to your manager. Hmm. At the end of the day, they are there to for you. Hmm. Indeed. Even Malay, Malay language friends also say that malu hmm. bertanya, sesak jalan. Yeah. <laughs> Because um, if Uh, if we, you ada, yourself, ada lagi, lagi. Huh? sesat jalan, sesat nafas. Oh, sesat nafas. <laughs> if, if you yourself um, the, don't really know who to talk to, don't expect those people in social media can help you as well. Yeah. Because by the end of the day, you work to the company. And, no, no, and bukanlah <laughs> with those people in the Facebook, Instagram, apa semua. So, yeah. uh, we have come to the end of our Q&A session. That means also the end of our podcast. Any last words from the two of you? I want to start with Uh, Miss Shaza first. Uh, wherever you are, whether your work, uh, going into your first internship or going into your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, ten job, uh, don't. I uh, will say, don't pretend to be somebody that you're not. Be bring your best self. Uh, so be yourself, but bring your best self. So you tak nak lah bawa all your huha huha in the interview, obviously. Mm-hmm. But show your best self to employers. Uh, because at the end of the day, you are going to be working there for months, years. So you want to be at a place that you can feel comfortable being the person that you are. Hmm, indeed. In Jiram, kembali don't be afraid. Okay, don't be afraid. To face your next transition of life. Nak pergi internship ke, nak bekerja ke, nak buat master whatever. Don't be afraid. Semua orang lalu benda tu. It's just that, macam misal cakap tadi, kalau ada masalah, tanya orang yang tahu. Okay? Kalau tak, tak tahu jalan, tanya orang supaya tak sesat kan. Okay? Benda ni, semua orang lalu. Apa tak lagi dia nak sekarang ni, the post pandemic. Okay? Uh, the war still on. Okay? Globally. And the challenges wouldn't stop there and that requires people yang betul-betul macam saya kata resilient tough okay orang yang boleh face challenges orang boleh manage challenges orang yang boleh survive 
the fittest will survive because why because dunia kejaya ni lepas ni lagi challenging awak hmm. apatah lagi dia keadaan dia kata apa ni 28% of the job akan extinct AI akan menjadi manusia hmm. okey so that will will post you okey what to prepare next sebab apa lepas ni okey not only yourself to sustain hmm. but also your family hmm. okey duduk hidup ni is all about money yes. tak ada duit tak ada lain tak jalan tak jalan Ah, no money, no talk okay. Tak ada kerja, tak ada duit lah So, kena kerja because Malaysian I would say fresh graduates Okay Only 5% yang nak buat bisnes mm. Itu pun belum tentu lagi survive mm. Because kita bukan guna lagi macam negara baju macam US The Capital Ventures banyak nak sponsor Orang-orang um, 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 kita kan Yang ada ideas ni kan Kita ni hansil dari mentality makan gaji mm. So, that's why government Must All out Find out investors yang boleh bagi high pay salary ni, high income salary ni pada rakyat Malaysia. Sebab apa? Kita hidup makan gaji. Hmm, uh, so that's why, apa nama, and that requires for us, okay, to be, apa kata apa, diamond and glasses. You have to differentiate yourself. The world out there, very, very tough, very rough. You have to play your cards very well. Kalau tidak, kena pijak ke orang. Hmm, okay? Apa tak lagi join corporate world? Lagilah. <laughs> Lagilah. <laughs> kan? Allah Akbar, subhanallah. Macam mana kita? Alright, all the best for your future reading. Ah uh, bedoh akan supaya terbaik. Ni kisah kan. Eh? You are on the right track dah UTP ni. Alhamdulillah the best just experience it tu je. Thank you. Thank you to Miss Shaza and Sonjit Daham dos very very well sharing very well advice. Hopefully apply to me myself too that will be going for internship next next year January. So I think I will take uh, all of the advice to be with me so that I will make all uh, the eight months time available for me and also for the, uh, my future okay so that's all our for our podcast uh, exclusive for talent corp uh, event uh, brought to you by association's information system student chapter for utp and i'm stefano Santini, your moderator signing out thank you for watching and listening